like my shoes with Valley Gow, I now bound for the west. As I went down to Collins Town to bid my friends farewell, twas there I saw the prettiest girl that e'er my eyes beheld. As I went down to Collins Town, <coughs> it was in the month of May. I paused for recreation and to see the ladies gay. And there I saw a pretty girl, and she's standing on a brow. Her beauty bright did me delight that day in Valley Bow. I said, my very young girl, now kindly to me tell, Is it by Banno's lonely banks your parents they do dwell? Or if you are a stranger here, for now I wish to know, for the killing glances of your eyes have broke my overthrow. Kind sirs is not from Banning, my parents they do dwell. They're either far down Carmack nor yet from Liverwell. For I've come here from Sweet Kilmore, kind sir, you know it now. I'm here today, a servant girl, said the maid from Ballygow. Well, since you are a servant, you must come along with me. For I desire with all my heart that we would marry be. No more I'll move, no more I'll roam from Banno's banks, where the tides do ebb and flow, or across the stormy ocean where the wintry winds do blow. Young man, you are a stranger here, and your offer I decline. For you will sail the ocean wide, and you'll waver with the wind. And when you meet with pretty girls, to them you'll swear and vow. And leave me here alone to mourn, said the maid from Ballydow. So very well, sweet Channel Banks, where lives that homely maid? Where oft times I had courted her down in the unfragrant shade. I pressed her to my bosom and kissed her burning brow. But now I'm on the ocean wide and she's in belly cow. I am a rambling Irish man, I have rambled up and down, still looking for my equal, the likes I ne'er can find. I ne'er saw one I can call my own, till I came to Morn Shore. And tis there I spy the prettiest girl, and she has my heart in store. The first place that I met my love, it was in Kilkey Town. I viewed her my friend as she walked up and down. She was fairer than the flowers of May, and her beauty it was more. She is the darling of my heart, and she dwells on Morn Shore. The next time that I met my love, it was on Morn Strand. I stepped up unto her and gave to her my hand. I put my arms around her waist and gave her kisses sweet. And I said, my fair young modern girl, will you pan the road with me? To pan the road with you, young man, I am a year too young. And as well should all you Lorgan lads have a false and a flattery tongue. 
But the even tide was coming down, and she could no longer stand. So she fell into my arms on the banks of Moran Strand. And when she came unto herself and saw what she had done, she wrung her hands and tore her hair, saying, Forever I'm undone. Won't you marry me, my lord and lad, as you promised me before? And my father will divide his land on the banks of Moran shore. Well, I'll tell you, as you told me, I am a year too young. And besides, oh, all you Moran girls have a false and a flattery tongue. But if ever I live, to come of age, my vows I will make stand, and I'll marry you, my morning girl, on the banks of Morn Strand. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I sing of the capers of the rock and shakers that are out all the night till the break of the day some just out of the cradle and more hardly able in every night club sure they boogie away well some they're arguing in more black garden while some in these clubs they're quite in disgrace when the lights they're flashing and the music is crashing in this latest fashion of imported beats now these clubs, I am stating, they'd sure take some baiting with no band at all but the music machine. Your man stands at the table without spoon or ladle and pours out his goods on the boogie and scene. And it's not surprising when the music starts rising to see him put a muffler on each of his ears while those that are dancing and maybe romancing are losing their hearing forever, I fear. Well, if you must ask me, or maybe attack me for finding myself in a place so designed, well, the wife was away for the night, she did say, with the old ICA, for to knit was confined. Oh, out in the morning, without any warning, out there on the dance floor, I was tasting new life. On the floor with the hippie there, sliding and slipping, with the shape and the make of me own darling wife. Now in due recognition she winked in a fashion, the eyelid on my side being all that was free. There was no use of talking with the music there squawking, twas then that I wished I was at the Kelly. Then and now lad before me had words so adoring, to say to his partner he couldn't hold out. So instead of a whisper in her ear, this old jester delivered his message by way of her mouth. There was some oscillating and some contemplating and more there were eating what I couldn't see. While some were still learning and I was discerning if any young one had an eye out for me. The balloons from the ceiling were soon disappearing. One young lad was searching for more on the floor. When a boy with elation gave three cheers for the nation, whose letters have lately reached this our fair shore. Now the shapes they were making, if I'm not mistaken, would leave your legs aching for more than a year. With their jiving and bopping and lepping and hopping, and never a trace of a jig or a reel. If I was in Burma, or maybe Uganda, or deep in the southern Argentine, those dancing gyrations that they're perpetrating, I'd not be debating in their native climes. Sure, I love all set dancers, the polkas and lancers, in carry the slides up in clare jigs and reels. And what's seldom seen now, like a horse and a plough, what I wouldn't give for a few double wheels. 
but now they're training and daily explaining the old ways of dancing to young girls and boys. So the discos they'll be living to be misbehaving at Kelly's and Sessions forever me boys. And John and John. Very merry people all, I pray you list a minute. For though my song is not too long, there's something comic in it. Tis of nails I... If you permit my sport of muse tensor, a subject which I now have got all at my fingers' ends, sir. This world is but a bag of nails, uh, and they are very queer ones. For some are flats and some are sharps, and some are awful dear ones. There's bricks and spikes and spareables and nails, both great and small, sir. And some like heads, some like nails with monstrous heads, and some like none at all, sir. A bachelor's a hobnail, and he rusts for want of use, sir. A miser has no nails at all, they're all a pack of screws, sir. My enemies will get some clouts where there they chance to roam, sir. For Irishmen like hammers, they will surely bait them home, sir. The doctor nails you with his bill, and that's a very sore nail. The coffin maker wishes you was dead as any door nail. You'll often find each na agent to be nailing his employer. The liars nail their clients out, but the devil baits the liar. Dame Fortune is a brad all, and she often does contrive it to make the nail go easy wheresoever she wants to drive it. Now with kind sirs, if your kind applause, da, 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 you will agree that I have hit the right nail on the head sirs. Sorry about the second <laughs> Alright. <laughs>
He was born in the city where the Shannon River flows. A youth of tender bearing that everybody knows. He loved his native language. Because it was his own. And Irish men should not forget John South from Gary on. As Christmas time was coming nigh, he faced his deadly foe. No one had spoken to him that morn, for her few had seen him go. But when his riddle body came to rest amongst his own, there were thousands there to welcome by. John so from Galeon. Oh, the wee ones in fair manor homes are asking, where are you gone? Where is the red-haired soldier boy who spoke the Gaelic tongue? Beside the fire he drew for us and spoke of Pearson's tone. Ah, mother, will we see once more Sean South from Gary on? Ah, Sean of Rye, you're resting now among Ireland's noble den. While Ulster fields are crimson, with blood you gladly shed. May God, who's in his kingdom, Look down from his princely throne, and may Irish men will not forget Sean South from Carrion. <laughs> My body is all black and blue, my face is deathly grey, and I write this note to say why Paddy's not at work today. While working on the 14th floor, some bricks I had to clear. Now to throw them down from such a height was not a good idea. The foreman wasn't very pleased in being an awkward god. He said I'd have to carry them down the ladder in me hot. Now carrying all these bricks by hand, it seems so very slow. So I hoisted up a barrel and secured a rope below. But in my haste to do the job, I was too blind to see that a barrel full of building bricks was heavier than me. And so when I untied the rope, the barrel fell like lead. And much to my surprise, I started up instead. I shot up like a rocket, till to my dismay I found that halfway up I met the bloody barrel coming down. <laughs> well, the barrel broke me shoulder as to the ground it sped. And when I reached the top, I banged the pulley with me head, still clinging tightly to the rope despite this almighty blow. And the barrel spilled out half the bricks, 14 floors below. Now, 
When the building bricks had fallen from the barrel to the floor, I then outweighed the barrel and so started down once more. With <laughs> <laughs> clinging tightly to the rope, I sped towards the ground and landed on the broken bricks that were all scattered round. Now, <laughs> so what? <laughs> <laughs> As I lay there moaning on the As I lay there moaning on the I thought I'd pass the worst When the barrel hit the pulley And then the bottom burst A shower of bricks came raining down I hadn't got a hope And in my desperation I let go the bloody rope <laughs> The barrel then being heavier, it started down once more and landed right across me as I lay there on the floor. It broke three ribs in my left arm and I can only say that I hope you'll understand why Paddy's not at work today. Come on, hey, come on. Come on. Um. Uh, from sweet Dungannon to Bally Shannon, and from Cully Hannah to Old Arbo, I have roved and rambled, caroused and gambled, where songs did thunder and whiskey flow. Though late and early I tramped through Derry, and to port a ferry in the county down. But with all my raking, I and undertaken, my heart was aching for sweet home town. And when I grew weary, and life grew dreary, I sailed to England from Derry Cay. Where when I landed, was fate commanded that I to London should make my way. Where many's again I ate from dark to daylight, I spent with people of high renown. But with all their glamour and uproarious manner, my lips did stammer of sweet Oma town. And then, mm, then further gone, my wild old son, to New York City I crossed the sea, where a congregation of rich relations stood on the harbour for to welcome me. In grand apparel, like jokes or arrows, they tried to raise me with sword and crown, but with all their splendor, I and hate's dispenser, my heart was aching for sweet Oma town. And when life is over, and I shall hover above the gate where St. Peter stands, and he shall call me for to install me among the saints in that golden land. And I will answer, I'm sure it is grand, sir, for to play the harp and wear the crown. Ah, but I being humble, sure I'd never grumble if heaven was charming as sweet Oma town. Right. <laughs>
Sing its timber for the lovely. And may your rest be peaceful in the mountains and the sea. Now each sunny, now each September races. Your world in girl with caresses, and each train load to Croke Park, you are with them in the van. But most of all on drolling day, when young and old go travelling, you'll be there with your comrades bold a hunting for the ran. So men, familiar names, ring out your prayers forever. Be the tea, Barnes, Ryder, Karen River. And let the little run sing its thimble full of glee. Be peaceful in the mountains and the sea. We're in this chapter now to spend all the machine as the rich and the fell bridge or do I make me hold so for me me can as me stop and me be a good chance and me she is a lark on the wheel. A glark lanny wurish fest messy head, the handsome malati, this jehot my mego, skull kite ma prat, gunyen, a court me son, a wog, a squabil, a del in the wood. Oh, fog and left off the gunyer, a priest, a marire, a senior, a marscap, a senior, a rustling in Marjar and Narval, and teaches Jerska, a deal in North on the wheel. Kiledan and Balo, Foss and Gachni, and Tasmere, so crave on this master glass or Tom Hinchima has a big act on the green, a gym of a niche, the Miss Penny's Joe. Talking of this heart, you pass or the Gustine, and Tashagal, a grave on Ran to Ruggers Yol, look gent to put Gina gun license, I yield, and look to the cheer, the egg, you bet you say go. Ta korragas chow on his yasugani look for some mission ye on our larme go full. A hannas will jag him or tanshki hung on craft or pinkies and not had a dog. And hell it's in fee, a scot will a sort game on and madru will yamri and brooks and will be. Holton and iris na higher peg yamri sle higher in a grain of gold doggy the fee. In the Oshler, I have this mark of God, and she's a fierce tree in the hill of a chicken and the cellar, and my general reached on the rib, who all like the kid of us, Yabby Levy. And she looked his pants, or will cower of his rage of sleep, be of the city as Talogan keys, scholarly both the school scrape of us, Yen, and look dear in the church, a turn to set free. Harsh and downer and nil a jar fre, ho grafter and fre, the harwaka share ye. Shinjer and a pint of steel fried egg pint chaff, and slip dish in a fillet didn't leave. The little lumdily doe, 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 the little lumdily and lost forever beyond recover our men and places in the mist of time. Old Master Hearn, for him we learn our lessons well for good recall. But now where he and Blackboard once stood, there's wear and groceries wall to wall. Poor Johnny Ball, sure he had his cross, but we young brats did make it worse. 
as we followed after and fell with laughter when our impudence did make him curse. To the mill of ranks with the corn in bags, fine horses daily they did fly. Where Michael Roach held his parliament and poured forth his wisdom from on high. And if your horse it shoe was lost, then to the forge you could straight repair. Where John Carl the Smith, so full of wit, new shoes would fit without a care. Duncormac stations had lost to our nation, like hundreds more it was forced to flow. And that place of joy I recall as a boy is deserted now but for heirs and crows. I remember when it was full of men and the beats bronze clang over laughter rose. As we loaded the beat to make sugar sweet and drank whiskey neat when the factory closed. And there was a man, forget if you can, like desperate Dan, I remember him. Any work he could take, drink porter black, shear a sheep, make a stack, that was Big Jim. And little John, likewise, has gone, though his fight goes on for a country one. Though his back wasn't straight, sure his heart it was great, never gave a bait to anyone. So there's my song of days bygone, and memories fun well worth recall of men and places that by their graces have left their praises on song.